That's a pan. It's uh, very traditional to this region. Basim is just going to demonstrate opening his mouth and showing you what it looks like. You can see it turns his mouth red. This thing alone is responsible for keeping half of the population of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka sane through the day, man. My name is Babar Sheikh and I'm very much what you may call a Karachiite. As much as I've tried to live away from Karachi, I haven't been able to. It's just something that pulls me back. I'm an artist by profession. I make films. I'm involved with workshops and teaching at art universities, schools. Most of all, of course, I've, I've been a musician since quite a while. This thing that we're going to right now, Karachi Kills Vice, it's a party we're doing. It's the first Vice event in Pakistan in, in our history, which is kind of funny. We were sitting in Basim's room last night and some of his friends came over. They were organizing this jam thing tonight. We're like, you know, let's just turn it into a party. <laughs> Aziza, she designed the flyer uh, for the Karachi Kills Vice Party. We had a conversation last night, we brainstormed a bit, and then I woke up this morning and in my inbox was this amazing flyer that you made. I showed like Karachi through the lenses of like Vice, so it was just like you know, prostitutes and burqas. And, like, so there was a drone. Oh yeah, yeah, the drone Bombing the city stuff, with roses. And, like, roses and stuff. Roses. Did you make copies of the flyer? Oh no. What happened? Really? He refused to Xerox it? Yeah. <laughs> so I was surprised that you took it that far, the flyer. But what's the reaction of your friends and people when they've seen the flyer? Um, I'm not showing that to my mom, ever. I think I'm going to make like a fake flyer just to be like, yeah, this is the one that I made. But look, it worked. Look at this. It's a success. We packed the place. High five. Good job. So I'm going to go on and play it really soon, really soon. Oh, really? You're next? Yeah. Did you put a band time. together? Yeah. Do, have they heard, do they know your songs or you're yeah. just going to wing it? Um, they kind of know my songs. I sent them YouTube links like right. eight hours ago. They say they know them. So yeah, we'll see. It we'll might see. be a mess, but that's good. It'll be good, man. It'll be good. Yo, we haven't rehearsed at all. Like, I just like, this started right now, right? This is Osama. He, uh, he's a good guy. He picked us up from the airport when we landed. He takes us to parties. What do you want to do? What do I want to do? What are your dreams, man? Journalism. Oh, yeah? I read 100 S. Thompson when I was young. When I'll you were young, you're 19. Yeah. How old were you when you were reading? I'm 19. I was reading at 16. Oh, yeah. That's a good age to read on this time. What's going on here tonight? There's a jam session over here. When I was nine, I, this was the first time I heard Black Sabbath. And that was the day, and Black Sabbath has just been my ultimate favorite band. And this love developed for this really loud, amplified, distorted sounds, and I found some like-minded uh, kids, and we formed a band. And how much more pale will you become? Am I not? So Dusk has been there since 94. I think it would be safe for me to call it the first uh, Pakistani extreme metal slash death metal, whatever you want to call it, band. This Dark Throne, very essential, stripped down black metal slash rock and roll from Norway. Uh, Immortal, I, I really like them. Uh, Abad is a cool guy. Absu is a band from Texas. King Diamond, because it's King Diamond. Uh, Morbid Angel, big fan of them. On the back is, uh, is, is Dark Throne again, hey. Transylvanian Hunger. That's from our book. We released the True Norwegian Black Metal book. Yeah. You know, maybe you could tell us about this city a bit. Tell us about Karachi, your Karachi. 
I think it's a it's a great city. Provided me with loads of inspiration for all my writings and my music, my art, and uh, it's changed drastically. It's it's sad because you know there've just been so many strike days that um, you couldn't go out the whole day. Nobody would be out. The streets would be deserted. It's like post-apocalyptic. But I believe Karachiites have kind of learned how to live around that in some way. I wonder what's happening here. There's a lot of police cars here. Uh, probably a wedding. There's a lot of satellite dishes, though. Yeah. Ambulances. Look, the ambulances is for... Yeah, there are ambulances. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. I think it was a wedding. People do like firing at weddings. It's very normal. Either that or the right. violence is coming to this neighborhood. It, it, it has, it has already. It's already there. Yeah. It's been here. Yeah. I mean, at one point, when the terrorism news you used to get, you really never knew who were the people dying in these things. But then there came a time where you actually knew some of the people. You know, you might just think you're just going on with your life, just feeling sorry about it, but uh, indirectly it does, of course, affect you. But I believe that there is still a lot of positive things happening that sort of are keeping the sanity there or keeping the balance there. That's about it, so stay loud and proud.